Hey everyone, it's Owen here from OTEC, and today I'll be taking a look at this really awesome vintage graphics card. I say vintage because this is quite an old graphics card. It was launched at the end of 2009, so it's basically a 2010 card, and it was the highest end graphics card at the time. And that card is the ATI Radeon HD5870. Now this card, what's interesting is that despite being a very old card, I actually found one still brand new, sealed, like the plastic was still intact when it came here on eBay for $40. So yeah, that's pretty awesome. So it's actually $30, but I paid shipping, so it became $40 because it was quite far. But I thought it was an awesome find and I thought of sharing it with you guys. So I bought it and now I'm going to do an unboxing of this thing. I'll do a deeper analysis and testing of this card in the future. But for now, let's just enjoy this brand new graphics card. Now I have opened it, as you can see, and I've also opened the seal inside. But I'll still show you guys opening the seal because I have a video of it later on. Anyways, this was on a time when AMD Radeon wasn't a thing, when AMD and ATA wasn't one company. Instead, it was before AMD bought ATI Radeon, so it was still ATI Radeon instead of AMD Radeon, in case you're wondering if you don't know about this yet. Now, this is also one of the first DirectX 11 cards. This is a time when NVIDIA was still on the GTX uh, 200 series, I believe. So they were still on DX10 while AMD was already on DX11. And they also have used the GDDR5 uh, with the fastest memory speed on this card at the time. So this was the fastest graphics card at the time. It's like the highest end card, just as like the, I guess the Titan V more, more or less because it really is the fastest one. There's nothing faster. It's not even 1080 Ti level because 1080 Ti is still beaten by Titan and other things. But this was literally the fastest card you can buy when it came out. Short of the dual GPU cards like the GTX 295. But enough rambling. Let's take a quick look at the box. It is still like an old design as you can see. So there's not much on the back, although it might be just because it's a diamond branded card because their packaging usually aren't very nice. But here in the front, you can see the um, AMD's uh, ATI Radeon's mascot. Uh, I believe she's called Ruby or something. So it's on a time when like fancy sticker graphics were on graphics card, as you'll see. So that's why you have those kinds of pictures instead of like right now, everything is monotone black and all they advertise was RGB. Back then, you had pictures on your graphics card. But here it is, the inner box, and it's interesting to me because most of the boxes nowadays are just cardboard or black, but it was white, I guess, back then. But anyways, opening it up, you can see the mini catalog or something from Diamond. So, quite interesting, they have the 6970 on here when it is a 5870 because, you know, if you realize something, this was bought from according to seller at least it was bought on micro center but i'm guessing it was bought after the 6970 was launched because it is so cheap because you know when it was just launched it is an, a high-end graphics card and it doesn't just cost 140 dollars so it must be some kind of old stock that the seller picked up and he ended up not using it in according to him so that's why he's selling it off on ebay after sitting in his storage for so long but anyways inside you can also see the user manual and stuff like that. It's still packaged nicely. I really don't want to open this because it just feels nice to see that. An old graphics card still with intact um, warranty and user manual. And it's just really awesome to me to find this thing, in my opinion. And with this, you also get the Crossfire Bridge. So that's really cool because this will cost you like 10 bucks or something on eBay. So for $30 to get a graphics card and that. Also, you, you'll see like a Molex to six pin adapter. This is not the safest thing in the world because you know, a Molex can't supply as much power as a six pin. So yeah, maybe in the old days when power supplies with six pin weren't that common, um, that's why they included this adapter, but you definitely shouldn't be using one of those. But then again, those adapters are also like at least a few bucks and also so is this vga to dvi adapter so i'm totally getting the worth of my 30 dollars by just the accessories alone 
But anyways, here's the graphics card. So before taking it out, it's, it was actually sealed, like genuinely still sealed. So it never opened before when it came there. Uh, but I opened it up, I opened the seal, and now we're gonna take a look at the graphics card. And you can see it's also being packaged pretty nicely. Although it doesn't have um, like foam on the side, it still has some nice dense foam covering it on top and bottom. But anyways, let's take a look at the graphics card itself. So here it is, the Radeon HD 5870 from Diamond. So it is at a time when dual fan coolers weren't that common. It is more common to see a single fan graphics card with a huge heatsink and you can see that this, the design is kind of uh, unique I guess compared to newer designs because you can see that they went with a thicker fan and they used two heat sinks on the sides instead of the usual designs where there's fans on top of a heat sink so this is meant to so that the fan pushes down and blows air to the side and through the heat sink so they can fit a massive thick heat sink and also a thick fan in the middle although you lose surface area of a heatsink in this area but yeah i guess uh, this wasn't as efficient as the newer design because otherwise people would have stuck to this design anyways you can see the nostalgic uh, design i guess because you can see the old graphics of graphics cards <laughs> like the stickers and stuff these don't exist anymore so that's kind of cool to see and because i've taken this out that's why you can see this kind of dirty I mean kind of dusty because it's been sitting on my desk for a while because I haven't had time to make this video but anyways yeah let's just take a look at it in all its glory it's still in pristine condition it's really nice even the IO bracket as you can see is still like nice and shiny uh, no like oxidation marks or cor corrosion because it's still brand new so package and even the PCB is still extremely shiny and nice and clean Although if you see this part, I'll explain why there's a tape here um, later because for now let's just take a look at the card itself. So for the heatsink, you can see that the massive heatsink has five heat pipes and you know because I've taken this out, I've actually tried this card out and I have to tell you this heatsink works really well, like extremely well. It keeps the card super cold and the fan isn't even that loud because the heat pipes are less, are just so massive and there's many of them and the heat sink mass is just really huge and you know this card is actually really long uh, and it's made even worse by the fact that the 6 pin was placed in front of the card so it's gonna make the total apparent length of the card even longer because you need to account for the cables coming out of there but yeah I guess it was the design choice back then because right now everyone uses the power pins on top so that it doesn't extend the length unnecessarily but yeah, on the back you can also see a display port, HDMI and dual DVIs uh, with dual link I guess and also analog outputs on the DVI. Although on the HDMI and display port, obviously you couldn't run a 4K monitor on this because back then 4K monitors didn't exist. And the standard of display port and HDMI on this thing only supports up to 1440p, not 4K. And on top of here you can also see uh, dual crossfire connectors for quad crossfire uh, four-way quad fire crossfire configuration so you can have four of these graphics card i mean back then if you had four of these you're like a complete baller because that's like freaking expensive graphics setup and it's just massive overkill although the multi gpu implementation back then was kind of sketchy so i doubt many people are actually using four of these probably only like two max like how it is right now but you never know because right now multi gpu is kind of dying out Anyways, uh, here in the back you can see the die area, 
uh, it's just on the other side of this uh, like bank of uh, capacitors and resistors on the back and you know I haven't taken apart the cooler yet but I was surprised to see that the thermal paste actually held up after all these years because it's still cooled pretty well you can also see the VRM heatsink so this card actually has proper heat sinks you can see those I'm not sure if you can see those fins under there um, but yeah it has heat sinks for the MOSFET so it doesn't get hot at all and these are the uh, VRAM chips GDDR5 although by today's standards these are pretty slow the GDDR5 modules and yeah that's uh, basically about it for the tour so yeah what is this tape I put on the back this is basically called the pencil mod that's what I found because when I was googling this thing um, because after I plugged this in I realized that this card doesn't have any software voltage control and the problem is that because this is actually a rebranded Sapphire Toxic card so one of the uh, nicer 5870s although nicer might not be the best word because these are also some of the 5870s that doesn't have like a voltage control option so that's not too nice but then I also found that you can actually increase the voltage by running some lines using a pencil and then offsetting the voltage and increasing the power and voltage limits so you can overclock higher and with this card it's actually really interesting because it's the first time uh, of me uh, trying this mod I mean I've heard of it but I've never know if it actually works or if I ever uh, succeed by myself but it looks like I did it and what I did was just put some tape over it so the graphite from the pencil doesn't fly away and uh, the mod fail but yeah I managed to pencil mod this thing and it went up to like 1040 megahertz which is kind of insane <laughs> because the stock speed is actually even just in the low 800s I think but yeah I managed to overclock it to 1040 megahertz which is a huge increase and you don't see that kind of percentage increase on newer graphics card anymore in terms of overclocking which is why overclocking in the old days were much more interesting and exciting in my opinion but yeah um, this is the diamond ATI Radeon 5870 or also the Sapphire Toxic HD 5870 uh, the blue PCB version because the first Toxic uses the reference PCB and that's actually better because it has software voltage control while also having a massive cooler like this one but this is what I found that was brand new and still like in pristine condition that's why I bought this one I didn't really think through of like what this card is and if it can do what I want like voltage control because it's kind of just an impulse buy but yeah I thought this was pretty cool that's why I made a video of it, but I, I think I'll make more videos of this card pretty soon because I think this is one of the more interesting cards that I have uh, along with my legendary, whoops, while the pop got stuck, legendary uh, MSI 780 Ti Lightning which I have now outfitted with a single <laughs> Noctua NFA14 so this card looks complete beast with like the massive Polymodec MK26 and the triple power inputs but yeah, I'll also make more videos of this card in the future, trying to bench and get the highest air overclock on the 780 Ti. Um, but yeah, that's it for this unboxing and first look on this Diamond HD 5870. Hope you enjoyed this video, because I do think this is a pretty cool card that I found, especially since it's brand new. Again, I keep repeating that, because I'm still surprised I could find one brand new. It's like super clean PCB, except for this part, because I use some pencil on <laughs> it. But yeah, uh, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, please leave a like, and please click subscribe to see more of my future videos. Thanks for watching.